Hello everybody, John Fulford here. I hope you're doing well. This video is the first in a series of videos where I discuss PROs, Performing Rights Organizations. In this video, I discuss my PRO, which is ASCAP. Now, again, as many people say, if you are operating as a publisher, you should be signed up with multiple PROs, both domestically and maybe even internationally. For instance, if you just opened up a new publishing company, you're publishing yourself and some friends, you know, uh, here in America, you should sign up with ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC as PROs. So if you work with a writer who's BMI affiliated, you could work with their publishing with your BMI publisher. If you sign a writer that's an ASCAP affiliated writer, you could sign up their publishing through your ASCAP entity, okay? So we're gonna discuss each PRO, the pros and the cons, starting with ASCAP. Okay, so let's talk about some pros. No pun intended. Hold on, there's a plane overhead. Before I start, I wanna say that these are general guidelines in July of 2018. So if you're watching this, you know, a few months from now or a few years from now, things might have changed. Let's start with some pros. A pro, get it? PRO. Ah. A pro of ASCAP is that generally speaking, from the evidence I've seen as a publisher and as a writer, they pay more for instrumental placements on TV show background uses. Okay, I'm not talking about feature uses. I'm not talking about vocal uses. I'm not talking about those SP, I think it's pr promo uses. I'm talking about the, the BI, background instrumentals, ASCAP in general pays a little bit more than BMI, okay? They pay a little bit more. From my evidence, from looking at the statements, I combed through my statements to do this research for you, well, mostly for myself, but I'm sharing it with you. Another good thing about ASCAP is it's back-end analytics for writers and publishers, okay? This system lets you see where your money is coming from, how your music is used, how much money your music makes, and on what projects it's currently being collected on, okay? Really, really, really cool stuff, okay? I, I enjoy going on that back-end system every quarter as my, um, as my statements update. Wonderful, wonderful information that, that helps me determine which uh, pieces of music are performing well, which types of music are not performing well, which TV shows, uh, you know, earn me the most money, which TV shows earn me the least money, okay? Very, very useful. The other PROs in the USA just don't have the, the, the deep analytics that ASCAP offers its writers and publishers through ASCAP.com. Really, 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 really cool. Yep, another plane. Another good thing about ASCAP is that they stagger the domestic payments and your international payments into different checks, into different months of the year. This is more of a personal opinion, but I prefer staggered payments because once I, you know, get my domestic payment and, you know, spend it, then a few weeks later I say, when's my next ASCAP check coming in? Oh, it's coming in a week. It's coming in two weeks because it, it, it saves that international payment for a few weeks later, which I kind of like. But again, it's all personal preference on that one. It's just, it's completely, it's completely personal, okay? So that's it for the pros. Now we're gonna get to the cons. One con of ASCAP is that they pay a lot less for background vocal placements on TV, for songs that are aired in TV shows. I'm not talking about American Idol when someone's singing the song I'm not even talking about a reality show where a character sings the song on camera like they're recording, you know, recording a vocal like uh, like my uh, my work on Bad Girls Club. Now, this again is personal preference because if you if you write instrumentals, you're not really mad at this, but if you write songs, you're probably upset at this. ASCAP used to pay a lot more than BMI for these background vocal rates. They used to pay a lot more, now they pay a lot less. Some people prefer ASCAP because they did drop that vocal rate and then in turn raise the instrumental rates. But some people, a lot of people see that as a detriment because they signed up with ASCAP, you know, because they're a songwriter, okay? And then, you know, they sign up and then they just see their vocal rate drop. Now I've seen people at ASCAP sit on panels and tell people that they gave songwriters plenty 
of warning before they dropped that vocal rate. I'm here to tell you that's 100% false. They dropped the vocal rate in between two pay periods, okay? So one pay period, your vocal rate's here. The next pay period, your vocal rate's here. They sent you a letter somewhere in the middle. They didn't give you a quarter's worth of notice. They didn't give you a year's notice. They gave you a few weeks notice, fact. Another con is the ASCAP Expo, okay? And yes, I go every once in a while. I probably go more years than I don't go, but ASCAP is a performing rights organization, okay? They don't have any business hosting a songwriter event when they should be collecting my royalties. And for most of you, they should be collecting your royalties at two o'clock on a Thursday instead of having most, not all, okay? Most of the employees from LA and a lot of from New York and abroad at you know some conference center listening to a songwriter talk about what motivates them, okay? No, no. A performing rights organization exists to collect performing rights for publishers and writers, okay? It doesn't say performing rights. It's not an ERO, event rights organization, where you go to these cool expos and, and conferences. You know what I mean? So I, I don't like that. You know, I, I just, I don't like it. Over the years, there's been more BMI writers that are coming through my library instead of ASCAP writers. And I think I know one reason why. I think BMI tells these writers when they're deciding whether they should sign up with BMI and ASCAP, they say, look, you as a BMI writer, you could join the expo and get all the information from the expo. But if you're with BMI, your BMI reps are in the office collecting your royalties, doing their job. While the ASCAP reps are, you know, socializing for, you know, two, three days straight, okay? If, if, if BMI reps aren't using that strategy to court writers, like, you know, the, the young writers, the new writers, you know, they really should start because it's, it's a good point, you know? Okay, that's it for this video. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment or email me at musiclicensingpodcast at gmail.com. Also, I put a link to my podcast in the description of this video. So if you want to subscribe to my audio content, click the link in the description. That's all I got for this video. Stay tuned for the next video in which we will be discussing BMI. Another plane? All right, everybody. I'll see you next time. This is John Fulford, and don't forget to live loud. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching. Here's some more videos you might like. Don't forget to subscribe and email me musiclicensingpodcast at gmail.com to join the John Fulford YouTube community. See you next time.